You did see that thumbnail correctly. I did actually get challenged on one of my on one of my videos. And this is the first time that's ever happened, so hey, let's make a video about it. So this is gonna be this is a fog matchup, and my opponent Nalek actually requested a fog a fog of war match. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And I would with Jess. We know her, we love her, we know how good she is. So let's go ahead and talk about Sonia. Server mate. Mm. I had to do all my stuff during server maintenance. Why is it that I have to do everything during that part? What in the world? It'll be funny if this was the first time this has happened, but it's not. This is the second time this has happened. 2 a.m. I just gotta remember, it's 2 a.m. Ugh. I'll be back in like 10 minutes or so. If I be back, I mean, I'm gonna go watch YouTube for a little bit. I just gotta remember to cut every single thing out, because I'm pretty sure uh, I can't have other people's videos in my video. Let's see what's in this Pikmin 3 randomizer. <laughs> It's trying to throw Pikmin in the water. And because it's a randomizer, all the enemies are random. And even though he's not in the final game, the Emperor Bulbox still exists. So there's just an Emperor Bulbox just burst out of the ocean. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what was I talking about? <laughs> Sonya, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> so, Sonya, typically she's in tier 4, but her whole gimmick is Fog of War. So, and because she has plus 1 vision on all of her units, she instantly bumps up the tier. She's the one CO that she doesn't have to build recons, but recons are still, like, they're even better at that point. You should still buy recons as Sonya. But you can get away without building them because tanks with Sonya's enhanced vision, that is, that will have recon vision. Same with, um, Battlecopters. It's just, do you want, do you, uh, your recons can potentially have seven vision at that point. And don't underestimate Counterbreak. Like, Counterbreak, that, like, that'll even make Advanced Wars. Uh, Advance Wars 2 Sturm sweat a little bit because Counterbreak, whenever you attack Sonya's units, she will fire back for 150% damage. No matter what. And with Counterbreak, and that's just her day to day. With Counterbreak active, it doesn't matter if it's her attacking turn or if it's her defending turn. She will attack first, no matter what. Unless it's Indrex. That is the only safe target that you can ever do. It's anything with Indrex. Everything, any like direct engagement, good luck. That, that's all I can say. Good luck. So, let's go ahead and get started on this. And Brook will be playing on Stalingrad. And Stalingrad is a little bit different when it comes to. When it comes to like actual general maps so despite there being hqs here there is the one single lab in the middle and also this wasn't this wasn't supposed to be played live so if, if you see all this th this that was just a mistake on my end but what stalingrad does differently is is a uh, what you call it? Actually, I'm gonna back up the turn because there's a lot that I want to talk about with this here in a little. I'm gonna back up two turns actually because there's a lot I want because I do want to talk about his uh, Nalex capture phase down here. But what Stalingrad does differently is the lab actually has a use. So normally you're able to build anything on the bases, like aside from. Aside from black bombs and maybe the stealth fighter, some maps allow it, some maps don't. This lab, unless you have it, you cannot build neo tanks, you cannot build bombers, and you cannot build stealth fighters. So, but if you have the lab, you can chuck out as many neo tanks as you want, and the only two responses 
that your opponent can have is medium tanks and mega tanks. That's it. And if you throw out a bomber, they can throw out a fighter. So there is a counter to that. Same with the stealth fighter. It's just neo tanks that they'll have issues with. So, but anyway, what I want to talk about with capture phase is this symmetry right here. So now it goes second. So he will always have, and the second player will always have like one more infantry than the other. Like it's possible you can start with two infantry, but regardless, you're always going to have one more infantry than your than whoever's going first. And that one infantry should have been racing towards this neutral base. No matter what, you always want to get to the neutral base first. Always, always, always. And whenever they're done capturing this, they move on to the airport. That's typically how when it comes to capture phase on that part. And then this infantry will go up. So he did this one one turn too late. And then back on turn four, start, he sends his infantry out, starts getting stuff, but he also sends this infantry down to get the airport. And I, like I said, I dislike this heavily. The starting infantry should be going to neutral base, capturing that, and then going to the airport. There shouldn't be a second infantry down here capturing this. And it's like I said before, if you're going to build vehicles and you're playing on fog, the first or second vehicle needs to be a recon. And Nalik is starting out with an artillery, it seems. And but Nalik also skipped the airport. Hello? Oh well. But uh I I I guess I can't really say anything because I also skipped the airport and realizing it too late, I do have to send my infantry up to get it. <laughs> I said what should have been done. I just didn't follow my own advice. <laughs> And he does follow up with a tank, so, okay. And like I said, Sonya can get away with, without building recons, because look at the vision on this tank. Like, that is insane, actually, just how much vision that, that tank can get. Infantry, move out! And... Since this typically devolves into, this is a map that devolves into a strong side, weak side type base. And this middle base, like, it can go for either or. Like, it, it does not discriminate on which side that you want to have your strong side or which one you want to have your weak side. Typically, like, this will be the strong side. And then this one will be the weak side. That's typically how that will go. But there are other games to where this was the strong side. And this was the weak side, causing the two strong sides to clash with one another. And then the weak sides is just having like a pool party or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but I do end up getting a recon for Jarvis. And I'll go ahead and park my recon like over here because I'm seeing how far my infantry are getting, and I want to see how well, like how far Nalik's infantry is getting. And so far, it doesn't look like they're getting far. And I see this infantry, and I'm like, okay, they're starting to come in. Starting to capture property, and I do see this artillery roll by. So, don't like, what you call it? If the sole intention was to just get around the forest, like, don't, un like, don't, like, because like this will, because these two tiles right here, artillery have five movement and they're on treads, so planes won't do anything to movement, unlike uh, missiles and recons. But these woods are only two movement for artillery. 
And then this, these two tiles, this will be five. So, unless if the intent was to send it this way, like, don't, like, keep your stuff hidden. I know you had, because uh, I know now I had no way of knowing that I had a recon here, because it's just outside of their range. But, like, but what you call it? But if you were doing that, but if Nalik was doing that purely to dodge this forest, no, just drive right through it. Because the forest will give the added benefit of everything being hidden. But instead, I saw the recon, and I had, not the recon, I saw the artillery, and I had to, I genuinely did replay it like three or four times, trying to see if that was a recon or an artillery. And I finally figured out it was artillery, and I was like, oh my god, okay. And then, anti-air down here. And now it base skipped. So, never ever ever base skip. Unless if the situation, like there are some situations to where base skipping can be good. Like if you absolutely do need like a tank or something, you absolutely need like a response to something. Then you can base skip, but there's no reason to base skip here. Like not at all. And all, all that buying an anti-air really does is like, it's a vehicle, yes, but it's not a vehicle specialized in taking on other vehicles like tanks are. Anti-air is good for taking out battlecopters. And Jess, she's not going to build too many battlecopters compared to other vehicles, like other land units. So, while it's good to get anti-air out, like around, like, day 8 to 10, don't do this. Like, don't base skip to get anti-air. Like, this early. Because this is only turn 6. And I go ahead and start having my comp tower. And I'm going to go ahead and interrupt this. Because my train of thought is... Okay. He got an artillery. I saw where that artillery went. I'm pretty sure I can go in and punish this. And... Funny me for faking that. <laughs> uh, no. Not at all. And... And then... Go ahead and... City skipping this just to get the... The lab. It's another thing I do not agree with. Not in the slightest. While the lab is super duper important in this like in this map. Like while it's important in this map, don't skip your cities. Cause the cities it's is ultimately like the lab, yes, that will give you like a huge edge over your opponent. But the cities is your main income. That that dictates what all you can truly build, not the lab. Like every single fun counts towards something. And I made a slight bit of an error here. So I thought. I don't know why. I thought this infantry would be able to see the recon if it went right here. And it should have. And it can see the recon. It just can't see what attacked the recon if it goes right here. So I made a slight bit of error on that part. So, say goodbye to the recon. I do have to give Sonya this, though. If you're trying to run away, when it's in Fog of War and Sonya is chasing you, she is very, very good at chasing people through Fog because of her enhanced vision. Not the power, I'm just meaning like the plus one vision on everything. That is an incredible thing that she can do. The 
build another artillery. Okay. And I'm just gapping more and more cities. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm getting close to my half. And <laughs> I saw this and I laughed. So, while yes, it is good to limit what your opponent gets, it's not good to sack your to sack like your your uh, your infantry just for that. It's not all. And then, but look at this. And then compared to like my capture, the only thing that's been captured over here is the calm tower. Which, yeah, Sonya would like to have the Calm Tower to combat her minus 10 luck. But, that's not really a huge thing that she needs right now. Because right now, what, it, what now I can need to do is get these properties. But instead, he properties get to get the Calm Tower and the Lab. And again, while those, while they're important, it's not worth skipping every single city. And I did see this as well. So I'm just, and I do see the anti-air. I was like, I'm not afraid of the anti-air. Hold the tank back. All right. So, I'll go ahead and capture all my stuff, except for this one. No, what I do instead is... I pull it back and reveal the artillery. And then I come in with my recon, and then punish the heck out of it. Artillery is good. I recently did a video with a defensive chest. And I utilize artillery a lot in that video. Yeah, defensive chess, you know, it's a weird, isn't it? But, um, against Jake, too, who has better artillery than chess. <laughs> because he... <laughs> but, um, but if the artillery is by itself, and I'm not going to count these two infantry and this anti-air, because this artillery is essentially by itself. Artillery is great as backline, like, units. They're great at that. So, and then you have two more artillery come in, and then another anti-air, and they skip again. But artillery needs to be in the back. They are defensive type units. And yes, you can use them aggressively if you know how to properly use artillery. And same with rockets, even. Like, you can aggressively use them. It's just, you need to know how to use artillery and indirects very, very well. And if you don't, then your artillery, any indirect that you have is just going to be picked off right then and there. And because it, I'm going against Sonya, I don't know how much I did. But I knew I did, like, 4 to 5 damage to that. Okay, 30 to 50 damage. And it turns out I did 40. Well, at least 40. And then going back all the troops and see, and this is what I'm talking about right here. Even though, like, what you call it? Even though it's opening, it's bearing some sort of a defensive semblance. Like, this is a completely wrong area to have a defensive line. Like, by far, but... But, um, what you call it? But this is what you want to try to do with artillery. Not in the front line like this. And just gave up and just gave up in infantry by doing that.
So not only is this infantry going to be lost, but potentially one of these two vehicles as well. So there goes the infantry. And then I got my tanks rolling in and wondering when the heck uh, Nalak is going to start capturing all of these. And then there goes the artillery. And then I go ahead and trap it. Just what's going to happen to it? Nothing. <laughs> it can. I, so now it can kill this 2 HP infantry. And I wouldn't very care that much. But at the same time, uh, that infantry is also going to die. Because I got one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially seven tanks in the area. And I did stop that because it is day 11. Battlecopters are a thing at this point, and I don't have any anti air. I need anti air out, so I get two of them. And lo and behold, here come the tanks now. And I see this, and I'm just like, oh my god, dude. Dude! While getting rid of your, like, opponent's infantry is a good thing, don't throw all of your vehicles just to get to one infantry. Don't throw all of your infantry to get to one infantry either. And there goes the infantry. And then... Okay. So, whenever you're going to go into forest, if you're meeting a conflict down here in the middle, don't go into a forest, like, going forward. Because 9 times out of 10, there will be enemy units in there. Because this is my area, and this is Nalek's area. This forest is within my area. Yes, I'm going to have something in there. And, um... All I can say is, here we go! So, again, I see no health on this, but I can hazard a guess as to where they are. This is because I have 20% firepower on my units right now when it comes to ground. Uh, I know this is like 70% damage. I'm fairly certain. Because just look at the bar right here. Yeah, that filled it up quite a bit. I'm pretty sure that's like 70. And... There goes the other one. And there goes that one. And then I'll go ahead and damage the artillery a little bit. Why not? And then, just for good measure, even though the majority of my ground units have already taken like their turn, I'm going to go ahead and come in and just take on this anti-air. And since tanks deal more, like, a lot of damage to anti-air, or the tanks are doing a lot of damage to the anti-air, I know that this anti-air is severely weakened, and since Jess's powers also work on recons, yeah, that, re that recon's gonna be able to take it out with a luck roll. But hey, with the added benefit, Rubber Charge does have the added benefit of all, like all uh, vehicles gaining plus one movement, so it does help my anti-air come in a little bit quicker.
and good on Nalik for not using Enhanced Vision. Enhanced Vision doesn't really do anything. It really doesn't. So what Enhanced Vision does, it'll, like, it'll give Sonya another increase in vision. So instead of the plus one, she'll get plus two. And she'll be able to see into forest and reefs. That are within her vision. That's it. Like, that's... That's genuinely everything that... That is genuinely everything that Enhanced Vision does. And I was I was right to start sending anti-air when I did. Because Battlecopters are starting to come in now. But at the cost of a base skip. That is three times I've seen that base get skipped. And yes, I'm going to harp about it. <laughs> okay, not so much harp, but... You need to stop base skipping. That poor base has hopes and dreams, and you're, and now it isn't allowing that base to have its hopes and dreams. <laughs> yeah, so th this one actually surprised me. I figured, I figured out since most of the troops were right here in the middle, that. Uh, foolishly, I thought all this would be left open, and it is left open, except for this one city, down here. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to figure out just what in the world is going on over here. And this is the time to strike, as far as I'm concerned. And I was so upset by this. Oh, I was very, very upset by this. Right, so, ignore this. So, this did 4 HP, right? So then you have this at 6. And then you have the infantry come in. I was so upset by that. It did have potential to... To what you call it. It did have the potential to take it out. But it was left at 1 HP. But I was so, so upset by that. So I had to use a tank. But hey, I'll, at the very least... That tank got to take out an artillery, and this tank got to cripple an artillery, and that tank got to cripple an anti-air. And I'm going to take the lab. And now, counter break. Look at the vision that Sonya gets during counter break. It is incredible. Wait. Here, here, look, look, take a look, take a look. Boom. Let's look at, let's look at that one more time. It's, it's, it's a light and day right now. <laughs> so, any engagements that I would wish to take, uh, I would get struck first, no matter what. I don't fancy that in the slightest. I don't care how much firepower I have. Sonya has 150% on any and all counterattacks. So there's really only one thing that I can do at this point, and that is to move away. And also, I'm going to make I'm gonna make this infantry choose. And yes, there is a correct there is a correct answer for this. Because this just started capping the base, but it's an injured infantry, so it takes three turns to capture. Meanwhile, this captured at first, was brought down to half health, and then is one turn away from capturing it. If this infantry is not harmed, then this infantry gets city. And while I bring stuff forward from the bases, I go ahead and take stuff back. 
And I'm also going to go ahead and fret in the comm tower, because I saw that I took the lab, and I was like, okay. If I can take the lab, then I can take the comm tower. And that is a dangerous way of thinking. It really is. But I started to get a feel for how Nalik played. And I go ahead and bring out Neotanks. There's not really much of a response that Nalik can do against Neotanks. And I certainly have the funds for him. And this is exactly what I was hoping was for Nalik to use a vehicle to interrupt his capture. And the entire versus the entire, that one always struck me. Like, this one strikes me as odd. Like, I don't know why. If this was a tank, then it would make a little bit more sense. But no, it's an entire going up against an entire. Why? So, anti-air, they're great at picking off vehicles. So if you have like a 4 HP tank, anti-air is great for picking, like, picking tanks off. Like, anti-air can do that without hesitation. Like, like, especially if you're Max and Jets. And, fine, throw Jake in there as well. If he's on planes. But, just, why? And now, like, he did, he did interrupt his capture, and he also did interrupt this one. <laughs> but I can also go and take care of this anti-air now, if I choose. It's just I would need a few good luck rolls to deal with it. That's the only problem, and I'm not Nell. And oh, jeez. So anytime you see, anytime you see like a giant army like that. Don't go attacking in like that. And then here come the March of the Mechs. And this one struck me as a bit odd. Why Mechs? No, well, that tank is going to take a path. And, um,. There goes the anti air. <laughs> and then my anti air is going to go and pick off that tank. And then, seeing as like nothing is going to come over here and like reinforce these areas, I'm just going to go ahead and start taking them. All the while. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I did sack a tank for that. I did. But as soon as I saw as soon as I saw the um the two my four HP tank go to two HP, I knew I was in the clear to use an anti-air. Because what I want to do is I want to start doing this. I want to frighten as much properties as I possibly can. And I'm going to get this comp tower next turn. No matter what. And I'm just going to keep the Neo Tanks coming in. Because when those Neo Tanks come in, there's not really a whole lot that Nalak is going to be able to do. Shush. And then Nalak did interrupt it, but he did so with the artillery. And I can't decide if. I'm okay with that, or if I'm against that. I'm leaning on against it because it is revealing that there is an artillery nearby. And I know it's not in any of these forests. I know it's not, so the only possible place that it can be, because I have vision on this city because of the tank here. I know it's in this city right here. Especially with how weak the artillery shop was.
And did I see that artillery? No, I don't think I did. But I do see that infantry are clomping up together in, in this forest. And then you leave the defensive line to take a shot at the anti-air. Which, that's good. You should take a shot at anti-air. But at the same time, you shouldn't leave your battlecopters within six spaces of anti-air, no matter what. Because this anti-air now has good, e like, easy access to it. And battlecopters, bombers, fighters, anything that's up in the air, they do not get hidden by forest. They don't. So this is essentially just clean up at this point. There's just the one infantry up here on my quote unquote strong side. But it's more it's more like this like down south became my strong side. Or really I just held on to the middle. Yeah, so as soon as the tank came down here, I was like, ooh. I'll take that. And I was also very upset with this because I know that this is left at one HP. I was like, God dang it. And I'm just going to sort of like take out the walls. I knew that there was something in the forest. I just didn't know what. Because when you see like your opponent do a defensive line around a forest like that, there's something worth protecting in there. I'm just not expecting it to be artillery. I'm expecting it to be a tank. Biocopter comes in. So that's an immediate sack at that point. And then I see the artillery leave, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> it was an artillery. And then still just crippling the anti-air, but one, but one the other thing, now I had counter break ready. And it's not using it. And then tank, tank, tank. So this would be a good time. And I haven't questioned it at this point, but Nalik has 30, like almost 40,000 funds. I have not been paying attention to the funds at all. I'm still trying to figure out, like, where Nalik got all of those? Why do you have that much funds saved up? Because a few turns ago would have been a great time to take up. Because I did not have an answer to Neo, not Neo tanks, but medium tanks at that point. And while the Neo tanks can deal with the medium tanks just fine, it's just it could have bought time. Oh, I know where it came from. It's because of these mechs. That's where it came from. Yeah, tank, tank, tank. And then I would have been a fan of another battlecopter here, but... Say lovey. And I don't really care for subtlety at this point. Because I'm pushing hard into 
Nalik's area, like, Nalik's main base. I don't really care for subtlety anymore. Typically you want to save Neo Tanks for like the big surprise, but I think we're well beyond the big surprise at this at this point. And I was glad that I didn't like going with an attack. Because now I see a like, mechs. I'm just like, oh my god, what in the world? I'm saying that for two reasons, because one, oh my god, there's mechs. Why are there mechs? And two, why are you not popping counter break? <laughs> and then why are you building... Okay, anti-air I get. You don't have a single anti-air. But the transport copter, that's an interesting choice. And let's go and go and pop turbo charge. Tank is gone. That artillery is gone. That tank is gone. I'm just capturing property after property after property now. Like, I'm about to start threatening. Now it's main base. I just keep the Neo tanks coming. And this is the point where now it finally pops counter break. And then I did say that there was a counter to two counters to Neo tanks. One be a, a medium tank and the other be in the mega tank. Okay, no, he bought the. Oh my goodness. Okay, he did actually buy the. The. <laughs> he did buy the mech. Okay. I thought the mech was in the bow, like transport copter, and then it got unloaded onto the base. I was a oh my goodness. Okay, but why the transport copter though? Like that's what. Like there's a lot of things I really want to know about this, and even though Sonya is going to be attacking first, uh, I don't really care if it's a neo tank that's going to be attacking. Okay, fine. Neo tanks or biocopters. But look at these interactions. Like, it took one of my biocopters and three of my low health tanks to deal with that. That is nuts. And I love mega tanks. I really do. I love mega tanks. But this poor mega tank. And then Battlecopter tank tank tank. This poor mega tank can't even reach this Neo tank. Now it resigns. And it's the 44, like 44 troops to 10. So one was the capture phase. So you now it has skipped so many cities to get to the comm tower and the lab. Well, yes, the lab is incredibly important. It's not what's going to win you the game. It's not, because you can counter Neo tanks with medium tanks. You absolutely can. You can counter Neo tanks with Enderex. You can absolutely do that as well. You just have to have 
very good positioning, and this map is not artillery friendly in the slightest, but it's fog. So they're a little bit more useful in that regards. And rockets, even, will do a little bit more than artillery can. Like, I'm pretty sure Jess rockets will bring Neotanks down to, like, five, maybe four. Yeah, five and four. And this is on planes. Oh, wait, hang on. There we go. <laughs> Doesn't really change a whole lot, but yeah. That is what, yeah, that's what, this is Jess's rocket. So Jess has a 10% increase. So this is a 20%. This is grit rocket, essentially. Like, so just rockets are able to deal like a crap ton of damage to neotanks. That neotank will be left at five, maybe four. Whereas artillery, six, maybe five. So there are counters to neotanks. And then if you have enough funds, then you can use mega tanks. Good luck in the mega tank all the way over there, though. It's a is the only problem with that. It's just my goodness. Don't skip all of those cities just to just to get to a calm tower and a lap. Like every other like map. I don't even think the lab does anything. I really don't. And in the comm tower, all of this is just 10% firepower. That's it. If you're Javier, then yeah, you get 10% defense, but every other CO just gets firepower. And while that's nice, that's all it is. It's just nice. It's not what's going to be winning you the games. If any property on here aside from the factories and the airports and the and naval ports it's going to be the cities that's going to win you the game the more cities you have the more funds you have which will allow you to build more and more powerful troops and and while there is a mega tank that came from Nalik it's not just the the quality of the troops. It's also the quantity of how many troops are there. You have to have a lot of troops to back... You have to have a number of troops to back up that quantity or quality of troops. Without the quantity, it's only going to be a matter of time before those high-quality troops are gone. Because an army of infantry can eventually deal with a mega tank. It's going to take a lot of luck rolls, but they can eventually deal with it. Yeah. One to ten damage. And this is Jess's infantry. With no calm tower. Zero to nine damage. With one calm tower, one to ten. It would take a lot of luck, but infantry can do it. And if you're facing Nell or Rachel, where's Nell? 1 to 60, 1 to 100. Mm -hmm. So don't pass up those cities. And when it comes to the factories, 
Get that neutral one as quick as possible, and don't base skip, unless you absolutely have to. And there wasn't a single time in this match where, like, that called for a base skip. There never was. Because if you don't have a good, like, starting area, like, good starting point, your opponent's just gonna barge right in. And that's exactly what happened here. Your opponent met you in the middle, dealt with you, and barged right in. And started taking everything left and right, and eventually started taking the HQ. Mechs, they're good. They hit just as hard as tanks. But... They can only move two, two tiles. Normally, they can only move two tiles. They're defensive units, essentially. They need transportation if you're going to use them aggressively. And there's only a handful of COs that can actually use mechs aggressively like that. Sami being the biggest one. Um, I felt like I didn't say like a whole lot first match, but there, I don't even know where to begin with a lot of stuff. So I'm hoping that this, I'm hoping that that was good, like good enough. This is why I like playing chess so much because chess is about foundations when it comes to this game. And while she does have like, like, the good foundation of this game is having a good ground game. And Jess, when it comes to ground, is one of the best CEOs to do that. She is. It's just the thing that drags her down is just the infantry. That's, that's really it. If you can have a good ground foundation while starting out, then you can and will make it into late game. Because I would not call this one late game. It, it was not late game when I barged in like that. Well, I do hope that this helped somewhat. As like I said, I don't know what all I can say about this. Like, well, I can say without sounding rude, I guess, is what I should be saying.